As we indicated last time, the Book of Mormon is a book of scripture like the Bible written for our day. It is worth more than gold, filled with messages of personal power meant for you. What is the source of its power? Could anything with such a fantastic backstory possibly be true? In this episode, we begin walking through the book, mining its everyday worth to you. How many times have you begun reading a book only to grow bored with it after a few pages and set it down? All serious authors know that the most important part of any book, besides the cover, is the first few words. In that brief span, the author must engage the reader, set the volume's tone, and convince him or her that this book is worth reading. Nephi follows this principle with the first two words of his book, the phrase, I, Nephi. Carefully chosen by a seasoned orator, author, poet, prophet, and statesman over the ten years he spent refining his message, their inclusion is intentional. They identify the speaker and prepare the reader to understand the context of his story. He believed in their power so completely that he repeated the phrase 86 times in his first two books, underscoring repeatedly its authorship and importance. Several later contributors to the book followed his example. I, Nephi is also partly autobiographical, a compact illustration of Nephi's no-nonsense approach to life. He chose the words to dismiss all suggestion of subterfuge and guile, bullying them into the very front of his record. By so doing, he declared, I am what I am, and take full responsibility for my words. As we reflect over Nephi's writings, the words form a snapshot of him as an iron-handed, middle-aged warrior king laying out the pedigree of a work God commanded him to produce. It is a colophon, as it were, a high-level summary of his most important product. He may not have understood every detail of its long-term value, but he knew God had a plan for it. Interestingly, the opening two words point to the phrase he uses to end his books, I must obey. They form bookends, tying the entire narrative into a cohesive bundle that spotlights his ultimate motivation. Whatever his fears, whatever his doubts, whatever the opposition or how long it took, the Lord had commanded him to create this work, and he would do it. I am Nephi, he declared, and I must obey. Even more, the first two words provide evidence that the book is a historical record, an actual product of his time. After the Book of Mormon was published in 1829, researchers began discovering Middle Eastern manuscripts written around Nephi's time 600 years before Christ that contained similar literary structures. While today's leaders sign their documents at the end, ancient leaders identified themselves up front authenticating the weight, authority, and consequences of their pronouncements. Nephi does the same, using his first two words as mallets to hammer into the reader's mind his authority. Their presence is a subtle statement, supporting Joseph Smith's claim that the translation he created from ancient writings is the product he declared it to be. Personally, I think these words are also the official stamp of a highly sensitive, plain-speaking prophet taking responsibility for his content. They form a warning, a sort of literary shaking the dust from his robes ritual, as we will discuss later. It is a prophetic reminder that his words are not only fundamentally helpful in our everyday life, they will also stand as a witness for or against us 
in our everyday lives and in the day of judgment. I am Nephi, he declares with words cemented in spiritual concrete. My words matter. Once you begin to undercover their meetings, these two simple words become breathtaking and immensely powerful. They are the first hint that these works that he and the other Book of Mormon prophets labored over for a thousand years and risked their lives for have power and that they have value for you today. So what is that value? Can they actually help you? In the next segment, we will continue to research this promise, discussing the value of life, specifically your life, and its hope and unguessable potential. And we will see more viscerally how this book's message applies to you today.